Sen. The Da Vinci Django is one of a few short-ish travel 29ers that came out this year on a mission to flip the script on what short-ish travel means. Every Django model gets wide rims and wide tires, and our LTD model got big bars and big rotors, but does all that fit with the rest of the bike? We went to Park City, Utah to find out. The Django has a pretty unique mix of like ingredients. Uh, 120, 140, which that itself is kind of incongruous. You don't see that on 29 inch bikes too often. Um, and uh, it's got one of these brands that does, that scales the rear center to the size. In fact, John, you and I rode an XL and it's got a 445 chainstay. Yeah, for me, the ingredients didn't quite come together the way I would have liked. Mm -hmm. And full disclosure, I normally ride larges. This is an XL, as you just said, but it was not out of the realm of the ordinary for me in terms of the numbers. I've ridden bikes with similar numbers to this, but um, I think I would have liked the large more, just it would have felt a little more nimble, and that would have just felt a little more in line with the bike's intentions and the suspension, I think. Meanwhile, for me, I was on the small, which has much more of the typical 430 millimeter chainstay length. So I didn't, I wasn't as susceptible to that longer rear end feeling that you guys had. And for me, this bike did feel playful. It did feel like something I could maneuver around very easily. It wasn't playful for me. I mean, it was a little bit of a, of a, of a barge, but what I liked about that was that it mitigated the bit of a disadvantage of having such moderate rear travel. Um, Cause I, I, I'll admit, I like straight trails. Like I like straight, loose, rocky trails that you're maybe making slight momentum adjustments to. And there was something about having that 140 mil fork that gives you as much flotation as you can get with a 120 bike and the stability of the long rear end. So for the kinds of trails that I like, it worked really well for me. I think that it would have been nice to see some more sophisticated suspension on this bike. It seems to be that brands, well, below 120, you get a DPS or a RockShox Deluxe. You don't get compression damping adjust and we felt it was a little missing on this bike. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it felt, I mean, the, the bike has a lot of ramp to it. Like it's, it's hard to get to the bottom of the travel. I got there, but you don't feel a harsh bottom out even when you do. Um, but it does, it felt to me when I was going through rougher sections of the trail, it felt a little over damped, I think. Um, but then oddly enough, like climbing out of the saddle, I didn't feel like it was all that efficient for a 120 bike. I felt like I could I could get some bob out of the suspension. It just it didn't make me want to sprint the way that I want a short travel bike to make me want to sprint. So I find that interesting because I'm coming at it with a very different perspective. You know, I'm 125 pounds, soaking wet. I'm a very tall 5'4". I didn't have the same efficiency issues that, that you had climbing. For me, this was a pretty good climber. Um, at the same time, sometimes I felt like it was a little bit hard to get to that bottom of the, the suspension, even though I had it set up with 30% sag. Yeah, and I don't want to say it wasn't an efficient climber, like seated. Mm -hmm. I think it's a super efficient, you know, comfortable bike to go mm -hmm. uphill on it. It felt almost like an XC bike to me when you're in the saddle. I mean, it has a 77.3 degree seat angle, which for a 120 bike, I mean, that's, that's near vertical. Yeah. The Django proved to be a pretty divisive bike. It's a comfy, active, if not especially supportive climber, a stable, if not especially playful descender. A lot of what that means for you kind of comes down to what you're into. And definitely for me, a lot of the other bikes that I ride, you know, I own an SB100, I've ridden a Joplin for several years. Being in that 100 millimeters of travel to 120 is definitely my comfort zone. And with this bike, it was very interesting because like you said, it, they pair it with a 144, which isn't entirely typical. And so we wondered, who is that bike for? Yeah, it seems to me like if, if you want a traditional short travel trail bike, this is probably not the one. But if, if you're like Travis and you like to ride straighter, faster trails and like the feel of a shorter bike that mm -hmm. gives you more feedback, that feels more uh, on point and sprightly, 
then this is probably a good one to look at. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I thought about this one could be really relevant to the trails I ride at home where we climb for a while. So I want a lighter bike that is pretty efficient. At the same time, on those climbs are just a bunch of rocks that have just been thrown into the trail. So there's a lot of stuffing my front end into those rocks. Mm -hmm. Meanwhile, when we head down, it is a lot of that straight, loose mm -hmm. trails that, that this bike does do very well on. Also trails that Maxxis DHR and DHF tires work really well with. Yeah. And comes out of the box with 2.5s. There's room for 2.6. Mm -hmm. So if that's one thing that I think plays to what a lot of the rest of the bike is about, mm -hmm. is it's a forgiving, as forgiving as a 120 bike mm -hmm. can be, kind of in the traction and terrain uh, uh, arena. It's kind of a cool package too. They, they, it's a nice looking bike and they hide the shock hardware on the rocker link, which I think is really rad. It just cleans up the silhouette. Yeah, it's got really nice lines. Um, one of those lines happens to be 157 millimeters wide. It is a super boost bike. Yeah. Which maybe eventually we'll stop talking about every time there's a super <laughs> boost bike, because maybe it'll take over. Um, but it is something to keep in mind. Mm -hmm. I mean, the good news is there's more and more wheel options. There's more and more crank options. So you're not as limited as you used to be but it's one of those things to keep in mind if you're thinking about this bike. For me right now, my happy spot is being on lightweight cross-country bikes that I can throw around with big thick tires on them because I really do love when they get to hook up around corners, but I also love the nimbleness that, that cross-country bikes afford me. We felt like the new Django was meant for the closeted long travel fan. Someone who's not after a big BMX bike wants the comfort and stability of a big mountain bike, but doesn't want a big mountain bike. We've got a little more info in the written review, and you can check out the rest of the Bible videos at bikemag.com.